Yay. There we go. You got the birthday on there. You got Najee on the saxophone. I said Najee on the saxophone. <laughs> We're good. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Shiloh Baptist Church Old Site. Happy New Year to everyone. It's so glad to see you. And just welcome for, thank you for bringing in the best month of the entire year, January. And, and celebrating January 1st, the eve of my birthday, I appreciate everyone who was celebrating January 1st. <laughs> Amen. If we could all stand for the hymn of praise, it's um, the bulletin of the correction. We're going to come out of the, um, if you're going to read the, it's uh, 145, there is power in the blood. 145, there is power in the blood. If anyone's going to have their hymn book, we'll do a hymn of praise followed by scripture and prayer and then go on and on so all right
working power. I don't know about you, but I need that power every day. Whether I think I need it or not, <laughs> I know I need it. Yes. The time we have scripture reading is come out of the book of Philippians, chapter 4. Mm -hmm. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, starting with verse 4. I'll be going to verse 9. I will be reading out of the New International Version, but if you have your word in a different version, just follow along. It's pretty much the same. Amen. I see a couple people flipping. Okay, and it's on the screen, and let us go to the word. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Amen. Especially this time. Like, yeah. don't be upset. Amen. Like, Amen. January 1st, you got a do over. You got a whole nother year to get the yeah. things right. So Amen. rejoice. Amen. 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 Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious. I love this one. About anything. But in every Situation. situation not some situations oh, not a few situations but in every, every situation yes. by prayer, prayer and petition mm. with so thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Yes. present your request to God and I love this because when you do that the peace of God yes. Yes. which transcends yes. all understanding mm will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if, any, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such, such things. Yes. Amen. 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 So he's basically saying, get the junk out your mind. Mm. Focus on That's those things that are yes. good. Yes. Because we got enough negative thoughts yes. in our mind telling us what we can mm -hmm. and cannot do. Right. Amen. Right? That tells us we don't belong. We're not good enough. Mm. We're not strong enough. You're not old enough. You're not young enough. Mm. You're not rich enough. Whatever it may be. Don't focus on those things. That's right. Mm. But focus on things that are lifting you up. To giving you hope. Amen. Keep your eye and your mind set on Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I need to plan that. Yeah. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you blessings. Lord, we just thank you for another year. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Lord, I ask for nothing, for you know the needs of everyone under my voice. We just want to give you thanks. We just want to praise you. We just want to honor you. We just want to glorify you. Because, Lord, the things we need is already going to be done. So, Lord, we just turn to you and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, if we had a million tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. We thank you for the sunrise and the sunset. We thank you for allowing us to get up to have another day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us strength, Lord, though our bones may be aching and our muscles may be hurting. Just the ability to see another day, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for those who came before us. Lord, we thank you for those who want to come after us. Lord, we thank you for providing the little, Lord God, and we thank you for providing the plenty. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that when we are down on ourselves, we can count on you because you said we are the head and not the tail, Lord. You said, Lord, where we're kings and princesses and queens, Lord God. We're not to be, we're not the low scum of the earth, Lord. We have hope in you, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen. Amen.
of God. Amen? Because that is the one and only. That's the only way we're going to make it through. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to ask the choir to stand again since they're sitting down. And we're going to do just a little bit more of the song. Amen? Amen. Because it's one of my best testimony songs. Amen? Because my life, my life has to stay in the hands of God. Because if not, there's just no telling. Amen. Amen? Can we give God another hand clap? Through our trials, through our trials, we made it. We made it. that song for I think and I really like it. <laughs> Amen. That resonates with me. Now we have a few announcements. I'm not going to read them all verbatim because they're in the bulletin. Uh, but first from the ba Bailey family I'd like to say thank you. Whether you kept them in your prayers or your thoughts, you sent a lovely arrangement, gave a memorial donation, or just helped out in any way, they like us let us to know that our love and kindness brought them great comfort and will always be remembered. That's from the Bailey family. Amen. Amen. One thing I love about Shiloh, we are a loving church family. Amen. Amen. Uh, members class, I think it's probably new members class, will begin on January 21st this year. It is for all new members of Shiloh and our longtime members also, so anyone can come. It begins each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. in room 106. 106 in Park. Hello and welcome back. So the Walker Auxiliary Club, they of uh, Shallow Baptist Church, next meeting will be on Monday, the 8th of January at 7 p.m. is a phone conference call. So if you need more information, please reach out to Sister Anna Bro. The annual community-wide celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday will be held on Sunday, January 14th at JM at 3 p.m. Uh, they're going to have music, choir is going to be there um, under the leadership of Minister Eric Armstead, poetry, a lot of different things going on there, so come check it out. The program, I believe, means say free and it's open to the public. 
Okay, that's this MLK birthday celebration on Sunday, January 14th at James Monroe High School at 3 p.m. The Fredericksburg branch of NAACP is having their MLK breakfast on Monday, January 15th at the Convention Center there in, in um, Caldy Civil Parkway. It's gonna be from nine to 11 a.m. Uh, keynote speaker will be Senator Tim Kaine and deadline registration, uh, the purchase of the ticket, or if you wanna sponsor, is January 7th. Again, uh, MLK breakfast to January 15th with Kim Tim Kaine and the deadline to purchase a ticket or if you want to sponsor, you put your business out there in sponsorship, it's January 7th. We have a shout out to Alexis Dobines who will be starring in, it's a long title, being up in here and all the other businesses that don't concern you, your or when you see a bunch of black people running, what do you do? That's a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's gonna be in something. <laughs> in, in Brooklyn, New York, it's the Exponential Festival in Brick in Brooklyn, New York, January 4th through the 13th. So through congratulations, Alexis. Woo woo! Hey. One of our own representing, right? Uh, it's tax time, so in, short, in order to search, ensure you receive your giving statements in timely fashion, please ensure that your mailing and or email address is correct. If you have any, if you would prefer to receive your statement via email, please email the church secretary at secretary at shilohosite.org. Again, if you want to get your statements via email, reach out to the church secretary. What else do we have here? Please continue to keep all those who lost their loved ones in our thoughts and prayers and continue to pray for the sick and shut in and those who are less fortunate. Um, and then also announcements, make sure that if you, want, if you have an announcement for the weekly bulletin, bulletin, it is in no later than noon Wednesday, prior to the Sunday you wish to have it put in. So any, anyone have announcements, please make sure it's our church secretary by noon Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. Women's Coalition will be meeting after the service in the library today. Women's Coalition is going to meet immediately. Wellness. 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 Wellness, I'm sorry. Women's Wellness. No. Wellness is meeting after church today in the library. There we go. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. My apologies for that one. <laughs> and that, and that's, a, that's a good time to have, to be honest with you. Like, with so many, I don't know about you, but my um, New Year's resolution, uh, it's, I ain't been a week yet. <laughs> so, so, and a lot of, I, mine is centered around wellness. I don't know about anybody else's, but mine is centered around wellness. So uh, this is a good time, I mean, time to have that discussion there. So and thank you. I also invite you to join us. So far we, we have, uh, women have put in express interest, but we really need, we have as well. Okay. So it's open to everyone. Wellness. All right. Is there any other uh, announcements? Great. So let's move on. Our <laughs> right, welcome. Do we have any first time, second time guests here? If you do, please stand and just say a couple words in the back. We, do we have a mic we can pass around? No? All right, just. Tennessee? Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Amen. 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 We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Welcome. Amen. Amen. And just a shout out to all our January birthdays as well. It's selfishly, it's my birthday's in January. <laughs> but uh, just a shout out. Like it, it's, those things need to be celebrated. You know, you never. We, Tomorrow, next year is not promised, and so while we have them here, let's recognize and honor people on their birthday. So, for, like birthdays mean a lot to different. Some people it doesn't mean much. Some people it means a lot, and so um, just happy birthday if your birthday is in January. If anyone's sweet potato pie, <laughs> oh, no, no, seriously, seriously, seriously. They, they, uh, we thank everyone on January birthday, and we thank you, our guests that come visiting from way out of town. We welcome you all. Hope you feel uh, feel free to worship. We worship the Lord. We sing praises, and you get to hear a, a, a great word. And so, and then at the end, if you are interested in joining Shiloh Baptist Church on site, there will be an opportunity to do that as well. And we welcome everyone into the fold. 
Amen. At this time, we'll prepare for our offering. So if our ushers can do their thing and lead us in our giving. Amen. sisters please bow our heads how good and pleasant it is when God's people live in unity God we thank you for the blessings that this congregation has put before you so that we may carry out the work that this church wants us to we thank you for those that were able to and those that wanted to but couldn't give at this time because it's all lifted in our names as a church to support our community here, our community within this state, within the United States and the world. We thank you for those blessings and we thank you for all the members of this church who lift thy name and continue the work of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hey Amen. We will have a few selections for our praise ministry, and then after that, you will hear the voice of our own senior pastor, Dr. Reverend L. Dobine Sr. Uh, before that, I just want to just give a quick shout out to our youth and Christian Sunday school church that's going on every Sunday now, it seems. They're doing a really great job. I'm seeing a lot more kids down there. So uh, just a good job that Mavis is doing and, and, and leading that, that group, that, that team down there and getting the youth involved. So my even one of my oldest son is kind of lead some of the different services and things they do down there. And just it's a really good thing they've got going on right now. And it's really it's a blessing for us, the Shiloh Baptist Church family, because many families are looking for their youth to be involved and that is a great thing they're doing down there. So uh, just, Mavis doesn't hear this, but they're doing some really good things. So I just encourage you all to continue to helping them out, lifting them up in prayer, and lending a, a, a helping hand from time to time. Thank you all.
Since God made the day and then had the graciousness to include us, it is indeed a happy day. Amen. Everything may not be peachy keen in your life. Rarely is that the case. Uh, but sometimes you have to look at the glass as half full. And remember that you once had less than you have now. That's right. And that's a happy day. And I believe that Christians, the people of God, should always express an attitude of gratitude. Yes. Sometimes you have to not just beg God for what you want in the future. Sometimes you just need to thank God for what you have today. That's right. There are many, many people who would trade places with That's you right. right now. On your worst day, when the mm. day when you're complaining, pulling your hair out and, you know, acting like a big baby. Amen. And we all have those days. But there are people who would trade their lives if they could with yours and mine in a New York second. So we have to learn to have an attitude of gratitude and be thankful for what we have. I want to thank uh, Minister Reverend N.J. Robinson for doing a marvelous job, uh, not just today as worship leader, but 
in every capacity. We, are, we thank God for you. I thank God for you. Amen. And our musical staff, amen, for doing a marvelous job in the direction of Sister Donna, our ushers, amen, amen. and our sound team, and deacons, and leaders, preachers, trustees, Lottie, Daddy, amen, amen. Um, I want you to continue to keep the Ferguson family in prayer. Uh, we had uh, the dubious honor of having to say goodbye to Brother Carl Ferguson, and many of you were here, and those of you who weren't here were praying for the family and continue to pray for them in their hour. It's their time now, but before the sun sets, even while you're sitting in here, you can get a text. And I say it often, but you can get a text that'll make you run and scream going out that door. Amen. Amen. None of us are immune from the vicissitudes of life. And so if you want people to have compassion on you while you're going through, you have to show compassion as well. And finally, I uh, ask that you would um, uh, lift up uh, the Reverend Curtis Edmonds, Jr. While we're here at 801 Sophia, he's at his new church Amen. as pastor-elect, preaching his first sermon as pastor-elect. Amen. 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 What a mighty God we serve. So you have to learn to celebrate and shout. That's right. And, and congratulate people uh, when things are going well in their lives. Mm -hmm. Because when things are going well in your life, you want somebody to give you a high five. Amen. You want somebody to give you a pat on the back. Amen. Amen. All right. There is a word from the Lord. Comes to us from the Gospel of Mark. It's Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Let us look and live as we read together. God's love letter to us. That's what the Bible is. God's love letter to us, each of us. Uh, you may not have gotten a love letter in a while. Uh, but God has a love letter for you. It's called his holy writ, his word. Let us read his love letter to us today in this text and context beginning now. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open, the spirit descending um, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, said, you are my son, whom I love, with, with you I am well pleased. Amen, the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. And thank you, choir. Thank you, Sister Donna. I want to share with us for the next little while from the subject, Oh, Happy Day. My sisters and brothers, it is my belief, it is my contention that far too often we make life a competition, even when it doesn't have to be. While competition can be good, and it can bring out the best of us, but we can take competition way too far. 
even as people compete against one another trying to be the best that they can be, that doesn't mean that our competitor, our rival, if you will, must be viewed as an enemy. Too often we classify people as either a winner or a loser, top dog or underdog, master or slave, first place or no place, and winner takes all, even at all costs. I submit to you, brothers and sisters, it doesn't have to be this way. When there are ways and examples that we can follow, that we don't just have to be a winner ourselves or a loser, we can change the narrative where from winner takes all, that I must fight my competitor with real manufacture uh, kind of ideas and thoughts, and we fight to the death. I believe we can have multiple winners. I believe all of us can be winners. I believe that all of us can be winners, especially in our faith especially as we walk the walk with Jesus Christ. As possible, as much as possible, we should live by this mantra and life code that we can live together and we can live by the mantra of our dear friend, Brother Buster Nelson. You know him, don't you? His personal creed, creed is what? Teamwork makes the dream work. What this means is that people learn to work together learn to work in collaboration and learn that this we is much better than I, and we are far better together. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. In business language, this is called collaboration, working together in tandem, understanding that there is no I in team. Now, I bring all of this to our attention because in our text today, we find an excellent example of collaboration. A wonderful example of partnership, combining talents and resources and working with persons and not working against one another. Here in our text today, we find John the baptizer leading a spiritual revival. John has no building, he has no stained glass windows, uh, he has no pipe organ, no grand piano, no great cathedral. In fact, he and his many followers who have left the city in the holy city of Jerusalem and the followers have left behind the immaculate surroundings of the temple. The temple was something to see in all of its architectural splendor, brothers and sisters. Yet uh, we have this, this, this before us, a, an example that you don't have to be in the most finest, refined place in order to have a good time in the Lord. Those of us who know the history of our people as enslaved people, they met in what's called brush harbors, or bush harbors. They didn't have what we have today, but under the, the, the sky, under the, the trees, out in, in the open, in the air open place, they praised God. Because they understood you don't have to wait till you get to 801 to praise the Lord. You ought to be able to praise the Lord all by yourself. You ought not to have to wait for Sister Donna in the choir to goose you up and get you in the mood. You ought to just think about his goodness and all he's done for you and just have a praise party right by yourself. Is that right? And so out in the wilderness in this desert place, they went there to get away from the hustle and bustle. So sometimes you have to steal away. And they stole away to commune with God with minimum distractions. Sometimes you have to turn your plate down and turn the radio off. And sometimes even go into your secret closet so that you can tune everything else out so you can listen clearly to God's marching orders. And in the words of the late, great Johnny Taylor, in his moving and stirring song entitled Still Away, he says, I've got to still away I got to see you somehow, not tomorrow. Come on, help me now. But right now, I know it's late, and I can't wait. Come on and steal away. Won't you let me steal away? I, I know Brother Johnny didn't necessarily have spiritual matters on his mind in this particular song, and you don't always have spiritual matters on your mind, even in church, but I digress. But... He's singing about stealing away from that brutal, barbaric, inhumane, ungodly life 
on plantations. Our African ancestors had to go through that. And they were treated like no people and should be treated ever. Uh, and they were treated as property as they were owned like a cow, a horse, and a mule, and a dog. So they sang the spiritual still away. Still away, still away home. I ain't got long to stay here. While it was and remains a godly spiritual song, it was also a song with a veiled message. It was a hidden message used by Mother Harriet Tubman and others on, as conductors on the Underground Railroad, alerting others that it's time to steal away. It's time to uh, get on out of here, yeah. It's time to head north and, and be done with this plantation life. Now, brothers and sisters, again, I bring this to our attention because here in this text, we have John who has led the people to a place in the desert so that they could be in a place without distractions, so that they could hear the marvelous message that God hates sin. Amen. Don't you know God hates sin? God loathes sin. It turns God's stomach, if you will. It makes God want to vomit. But God loves sinners. You miss your place to shout. I said God hates sin, but he loves sinners. In some way, that seems like an oxymoron, but that's good news for us. Uh, he, he hates the things that we do to each other and to ourselves, but he loves us in spite of us. Oh, come on now. You may not have grown up in a home like I grew up in, but I think most of you did. Our parents were not always pleased with everything that we did. I don't know about you, but sometimes my brothers and I disappointed mom and dad. Sometimes we, we made them feel ashamed to say that, they were, that we were their children. But at, not at one time did they load us up in the car and take us to the orphanage and say, you are no longer my child. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. They always claimed us, even on our worst day. Yeah. But that's... That, Pales in comparison to how God feels about you. Amen. I wish I had a witness. I, I, I just believe too many of us don't really grasp uh, the, the, the power, the powerfulness of how much God loves us, even on our worst day. Some of us don't get it because some of us think we can earn it. Can I help you out? You can't be too good to earn God's grace and mercy. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. On your best day, on my best day, I'm still a candidate for hell. But there's a conjunction. But! I, I, I like that conjunction. That conjunction means that everything I said before is true, but there's something else to be said about it. I, I am a candidate for hell. I deserve to be in hell, but God, because of God's amazing grace. And if he can love me with all of my imperfections, what makes you think he can't love everybody else in their imperfections? Pray with me if you will. And so, brothers and sisters, we, we have Jesus. Jesus who preached repentance. Uh, he, he preached repentance that, that you need to, to, to say, God, I'm sorry. I know I messed up. You need to own your stuff. You ought not always point fingers of blame at everybody else and what they're doing or what they're not doing, every now and then you ought to reach a place of spiritual maturity and say, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. I'm the one who's messed up and tore up from the flow up. Not just them, but I am a candidate for hell. But, but, Jesus, Jesus said, I have a remedy. I have a remedy for your sin situation. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Jesus preached, preached repentance and offered them, the people and us today uh, a ritual cleansing power of baptism. Yes. And out on the wilderness one day with his many followers and the people of the way movement, 
John is baptizing, but Jesus shows up. In my mind, he's dipping somebody in the water. But when he saw Jesus, that brother or sister put up some bubbles. Because, uh, see, when, when Jesus shows up, uh, everything else becomes secondary. When, when Jesus shows up, your priorities change. When Jesus shows up, what a difference, what a change, what a transformation he makes in our lives. But Jesus shows up. Won't he show up? And when he shows up, John says, look, behold, see the son of God who comes to take away the sins of Aaron. Amen. Amen. Who comes to take away the sins of every one of us. Bless his holy name. And this is the one John says, I've been telling you about. He's a bad man. So bad that I'm not worthy to even tie his shoes. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with fire. He will baptize you into the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost. Uh, that, 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 that makes you laugh when you ought to cry. It's the Holy Ghost that tells you to get up from your weeping bed and try it one more time. It's the Holy Ghost that says on your worst day, you are still a child of the Most High King. See, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one I've been telling you about. Yeah, he's, he's all of that in a bag of chips. Jesus didn't stop on the banks, however. The text says that he went on down into the river and kept walking in the water. And he said to John, I want you to baptize me. What? You've got it twisted. How, how is it that you want me with my sinful ways to baptize you? You want me to baptize you? Surely, 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 surely you just, I'm not worthy because I know who you are. John knew who Jesus was. I wonder, do we know who he is? Do we know who he is? Let me tell you who he is because some of us, even in church, don't get it right. We think because I'm holier than him or her, that makes us better. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Let me help you. On your best day, you are still a full-fledged candidate for hell. However, there comes another conjunction. But the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord have mercy. I, I'm going to shout by myself. I, 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 I don't know what they were singing or if they were singing at all, but as I look at this text, I hear this song that many have heard when we were baptized, whether it was in a creek or downstairs or some other place, that song that says, take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. Now Jesus' baptism in the Jordan differs greatly from our baptism. But see, John baptized Jesus because Jesus insisted. John objected to Jesus' request because he said, I'm not worthy, and he was right. See, see, John recognized who he was. He, he baptized his followers in the River Jordan as they admitted their sins. Because if you admit and confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins. Is that right? See, it's, it's, it's you confessing your sin, not you trying to confess somebody else's sin, unless y'all sin together, but I'll leave that alone. <laughs> then we can talk about conf confessing our sins. <laughs> Bible teaches us in 1 John 9 that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This means we understand that we have a sin problem. Amen. 
I got a sin problem. You got a sin problem. All church folk and all God's children have a sin problem. None of us are immune from committing sins. Because sin is not just what you do. Sometimes it's what you don't do. Sin is a problem that we cannot fix on our own. It's a problem that we need somebody else to help us with because we can't do it by ourselves. We sing, that's why we sing Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed me white as snow. Yet Jesus, even with John objecting, steps into the water. Can you see him? And he tells John the Baptist, he tells him to baptize me. And again, John's response is, you must be kidding. You can't be for real. Jesus insists on being baptized by John. Jesus would not take no for an answer. Jesus was insistent and persistent. And I imagine the conversation going something like this. John baptized me. And he said, what you say, Willis? <laughs> he said, you heard me correctly. John, I need you. I want you. I insist that you baptize me. And John still refuses on the grounds of his unworthiness. And furthermore, John refuses because unlike his other candidates for baptism and us, Jesus had no sins for which to confess. Amen. Jesus is sinless. Jesus is without spot or wrinkle. Why then does Jesus insist on being baptized? I'm glad you asked. Well, I believe that Jesus was without sin, was baptized to show his solidarity with us. Jesus was saying by inference, I will go down into the water to keep you from going down in the hell. No wonder the songwriter put pen to paper and gave us these marvelous and magnificent words. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. I don't know about you, but I can shout right there. I can shout by myself. I don't need tambourines. I don't need you to join me. I can just shout by myself because of his grace and his mercy and his mercy and his grace. I can say it like the songwriter. I was sinking. Deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but love lifted me. Is that your testimony? Not my resume, not where I went to school, not much, how much money I got in the bank because I don't have any, not the car I drive, not the, the neighborhood I live in, not my degrees, none of that. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It was love. I don't know about you, Shiloh, but it was love that lifted me. It was love that lifted me. Not my goodness, but his love lifted me. When nothing else could help, when no one else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Baptism, brothers and sisters, represents a spiritual cleansing. Baptism represents getting our sin debts paid in full, even though we're not sin free. I, I said something, Dan. Don't, don't let it go over your head. Let me say it one more time for the people riding that short bus. <laughs> Baptism brothers and sisters, represents getting our sin debts, past, present, and future, paid in full. Paid in full. With his precious blood. Even though, even though right now where I stand and where you sit, uh, wherever you are listening, you are not sin free. 
I said, you are not sin free. Just in case you didn't know it, you are not sin free. Sin is not just what you do. Sometimes it's what you don't do. And I believe one of the greatest sins that we can commit is the sin that Satan committed that was the sin of arrogance. Arrogance somehow believes I'm elevated above you. Arrogance make us stick our chest out, put our noses in the air, and think that we are somehow better than somebody else. What an oxymoron that one piece of dirt nasty, vile, repugnant dirt thinks that he or she can be better than someone else when we must understand and conclude but for the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When nothing else could help. We we owe a debt but a debt we cannot pay. Yet Jesus, bless his holy name, steps in on our behalf and he says, she's one of mine. He's one of mine. Lord, have mercy. Isn't that wonderful? He calls you by name. He doesn't just leave it generically. He says, Aaron is one of mine. I know you may not like him. I know you may think you're better than he is, but he's one of mine. And you might be right, but he's still mine. Lord, have mercy. You know, uh, as a boy growing up, and even as a man, uh, I'm sure, no, I know, I disappointed O.C. and Leola. That's my daddy's name, my mama's name, and I know I didn't put a handle on it, but she can't get to me now. <laughs> I didn't always please them. I sometimes missed the mark. Sometimes I did some things I should not have done. Sometimes I went to places I shouldn't have gone. I can tell you this because we have the same story. <laughs> can I tell you, there were even times, uh, my, my father never whipped me. My wife said that's part of my problem. <laughs> Mama took care of it. Mama took care of it. And then, 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 I don't know if you had a mama like mine, but uh, uh, I think it was somewhat cruel and unusual punishment. This is why. See, we, I grew up in the country, and mama would say, go get me a switch. Yeah. Right. Look, me. You said you want to whip me. That, that makes me think you ought to go get your own switch. And, and so since she said go get a switch, I went out there and got a real small one. And she sent me back a couple of times till it seemed like I brought a whole tree. And, and she would wear my backside out. Daddy never whipped me. Never, not one time. Uh, maybe he should have, but he did. But he would just talk to me. A lot of times he'd call you in the room. Uh, he'd call us in the room and we're standing there. And for a long time, Donna, he wouldn't say anything. So I'm thinking maybe he forgot it. <laughs> maybe he's asleep. Maybe I got, I'm getting off. But then in my dad's old black southern drawl, he would say, son, <laughs> your actions have disappointed me. Yeah. Uh, you brought shame on the family. And when he finished talking to me, I wish mama would come back in with the switch. <laughs> well, at least she did what she had to do and it got over, but. <laughs> Sometimes daddy would talk, and you know, he was a preacher, so he, he'd talk a while. <laughs> and, and I am his son, amen. amen. He would talk to us and he'd say things like, now nah, you know better. Your mom and daddy didn't teach you how to act like that and to say certain things, amen. amen. So I learned some words that I didn't learn in Sunday school, didn't learn at home, <laughs> but I had three older brothers. And they gave me a wonderful vocabulary. 
And even though I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, I have not forgotten those lessons. But when we sin, it breaks the Lord's heart more than we broke our parents' heart. But, but because of his amazing grace and by his wondrous love, he, he has a spiritual case of amnesia and forgets about our sin. He, he casts them in the sea of forgetfulness so that they won't rise against us in the day of judgment. And as we look at this text, brothers and sisters, as we reflect on our own baptism, whether it was in the baptismary downstairs or out in the creek somewhere in the country many years ago, we should never, ever forget that moment when Jesus washed, or when he washed, he washed our sins away. No wonder Edward Hawkins and Shirley Miller gave us that stirring and uplifting, thankful song entitled, Oh Happy Day. The song says, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed, oh, when he washed, oh, when he washed, when he washed, he washed my sins away, oh, happy day. Then he taught me how, taught me how to watch, fight, and pray, and live rejoicing, rejoicing every day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day because only Jesus could wash my nasty, vile, stinky, funky, repugnant sins away. And only God, through his love and the willingness to give Jesus in your stead. Okay. I can't miss this. You can, don't miss this. Why? Would you give up the Hope Diamond uh, for cubic zirconia? Why, why would you do that? It really don't make sense. Does it? Jesus, in this case, being the Hope Diamond, and you and I, on our best day, being fake diamonds. Amen? See, it's not just the monetary value of a thing. You've got some things that are precious to you and you only. Okay, you don't believe it? Haul off and die. Amen. And your children or your grandchildren could take that thing or those things that you held near and dear to your heart and say, this ain't nothing. Why would grandma, why would granddad, uh, why would my loved one hold on to this? It may not have meant anything to you, but sentimentally, it means something to them. I wish I had a witness. You may not mean anything to anybody else, but when the Lord looks at you, and when the Lord looks at me, he has a sentimental connection to us and says he's valuable. Maybe not in your eyes, She's valuable, maybe not in your eyes, but she's valuable to me. How valuable? I'm glad you asked. So valuable that I would give my own son, my only begotten son, because Aaron, Shallow, Lottie Dotted, everybody is valuable in his sight. You know, when I think about some of the things I've done, they were not all pleasing things. Not in God's sight, not even in my sight. I, I know I'm the only one in here. Somebody waiting for me to confess some great sin so you can get on the phone and text, child, you know what he said he did? <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll wait for you and then we can talk to each other. <laughs> but since we are at a stalemate, let's move on. <laughs> see, 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 when I think about some of the things I've done, preacher, pastor, preaching since 15, pastoring since 23, uh, I still struggle. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
I, I, I am in sin anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and that's really what church is. Uh, we hadn't conquered it, but we're yet battling it. Because there was a time when you weren't battling it. You just like to do what you like to do when you like to do it. And, but now, when you mess up, it bothers your spirit. Because you know it disappoints the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I look back over my life, and some of the things that I did that I shouldn't have done, and in the words of the, uh, that was said, some of the things that I, I, I should have done, I didn't do. And sometimes being silent, I would, I would have not spoken up about my shortcoming, but I'm, I feel free today. Not to talk about in detail, amen. <laughs> Psalm says, I must tell Jesus, which means it ain't none of your business. But I get happy when I know that in spite of me, I'm safe in his arms. <laughs> Not because of my goodness, but only by his grace and mercy. His mercy and his grace. His grace and his mercy. His mercy and his grace. And when I think about it, I get happy. I don't have to have this wonderful music. I don't have to have somebody trying to goose me up. But when I think of his goodness that I don't deserve and all he's done for me, my soul says hallelujah. I have a praise party all by myself. Lord have mercy today. I don't deserve his redemption, but in spite of me, morning by morning, new mercies I see. My brothers and sisters, then I think about, y'all know I love music, all kinds of music. I think about what Ice Cube said. He said it was a good day. A good day. But it ain't good enough. It was a happy day when Jesus washed and he keeps on washing and he's still washing my sins away. Lord have mercy. Uh, perhaps you got on clothes or undergarments that you have worn previously. Amen. But you don't wear them on consecutive days unless you're a teenage boy. <laughs> Mama and Daddy had to tell you it's about time for your weekly bath. <laughs> but we don't throw them away just because they get dirty. We don't throw them away just because they are a bit soiled. We take them to the washing machine <laughs> and we turn on the water put a little detergent in it, and, and because it needs it, we put a little, little Clorox in it, too. <laughs> then we throw them in the dryer, and we put them on again. Amen. They were dirty. Yeah. Nasty, vile, and repugnant, even, in some instances. Let's not go there, because we got to go to lunch after this. <laughs> but if you can wash your undergarments <laughs> and use them again, what makes you think that God can't take a sinner and a wretch like me? Pick me up. Turn me around. Place my feet on solid foundation and give me one more chance to get it right. And if he can do it for me, he can do it. He can do it. He can do it, can do it for somebody else. The blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary is better than water. Water by itself ain't enough. Uncle, Uncle Jesse and my daddy took me down in the water when I was seven years old, but, but he washes me with blood. And not just any blood, but his precious blood. 
And he says to me, you have another chance to get it right. And I don't know how you feel about it, but when I think about it, his goodness. When I think about his mercy. When I think about the fact that he gives me another chance. Another chance to get it right. When I think about the fact that I still fall and stumble. I know you don't. The fact that I still miss the mark. But he does not, he does not, he does not throw me away. But he gives me, I said he gives me another chance. And I don't know about you, but when somebody gives me something, no matter how little or how much it might be, Mom and Daddy taught my brothers and me that when they give it to you, they don't have to give it to you. But when they give it to you, you ought to open up your mouth and say why. Thank you. Thank you. That's why we're here today. That's all I got for you, Shiloh. Thank you, Lord, for being so good. Thank you, Lord, for giving me another chance. Thank you, Lord, for looking beyond my faults and seeing my knees. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And when I finish all of that, I say, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. One more time, Sister Donna, let's sing that together. We're going to sing with them this time. The door of the church stands open. Mm-hmm. For what you, what got. you got. Yeah. I believe when we're fully and, and totally 
thankful for what we have, God might even give us some more. Amen. 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 Bless his name. Amen. At this time, we will gather our hearts together for this time of Holy Communion. Would you join me? This time we will ask our two young men who recently joined this church family. Two young men, hey man. <laughs> 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 That's right. And lift that brother, that sister back. Mm -hmm. And 
you don't throw them away, you know, because the Bible is in his sight. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So now we're ready to have Holy Communion. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend N.J. Robinson to lead us in prayer. not just what you thought it was, it's more. But isn't that how I like it? Yeah. Sometimes you think you know what you know, and then the Lord shows you you don't really know all you think you know. <laughs> it's, this cup and this bread, this bread and this cup, represents his body. Yes. Every time we take it, we should not take it lightly. That he loved, loved and loves us past tense and present tense. So much. Yes. See, uh, I know uh, it may not be the best analogy. I know we got dog lovers in here, they're great, but I, I don't think you're going to die for your dog. <laughs> Amen. You like your dog, you love your dog, you miss your dog when your dog's gone. But he loves you so much. So much. Yeah. So much. Yeah. And he gave his son. And his son said yes to the arrangement. Yeah. And on the he died. You went to me. Bless his over there. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him to represent his body and his blood. Stop loving us, even when we mess up. I didn't hear another amen. Amen. That is what I tell you. There's that game people play with flowers and they pull a petal and say, she 
loves me. She loves me back. I don't know. She loves me. Whatever. He has only one, one way that he moves the heavens. I love him. I love him. I love her. I love her. I love her. How much? arrangement but he sees your time xness and my time xness and he sees us as a rolex yes, thank you, Lord. amen yes. hallelujah amen at this time we'll ask our deacon officers to pass out the trays the elements to our brothers and sisters as we commune together and thank God for the gift of Jesus. Amen.
powerful rit ritual. We replicate this every Union Sunday and other occasions. We remember what has been done so that it will help us in all that we are called to do. In that upper room, Jesus gathered with his disciples. They shared in What a fellowship, but that was what was in their heart. And you know what that means? It means very similar to that, brothers and sisters, the same as the song that is a contemporary song now. It says, I need you, you need me. We're all a part of God's mm -hmm. body. I need you to survive. That's right. Don't be the long range. <laughs> it's not going to work. Mm. You That's need right. a connection. That's why we come to church. I don't know about you, but I come to church feeling low. Yeah. I'm talking about low as low can be. Mm -hmm. But I heard a song. Yeah. I, I saw a face. Yeah. Right. I got a hug. Yeah. Right. A handshake. Yeah. And, and, and I felt better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because when you're by yourself, Satan starts talking to you. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and telling you what you're not, which you already know. Yeah. However, you have to often say this, but, amen. Let us receive the benediction and let us go down from this place. Amen.
church say yeah. 